afternoon to all of you. Welcome to this uh, press conference on the occasion of uh, the Navy Day is happening tomorrow, the 4th of December. It's a very memorable day for the Navy, highlighting the exploit of a, of a service uh, on the during the 1971 war, the action by the Navy that led to the decisive victory of the nation. So, uh, a warm welcome to all of you for this uh, press conference. Uh, I intend to take a look at the year that has gone by. It's exactly a year plus a few days uh, since I've taken over as the Chief of Naval Staff. And uh, I'll try and portray some of the key aspects that have uh, been undertaken for the last one year. Uh, operationally, we have had a very uh, intense, very uh, engaging uh, time for the last one year. Our ships, submarines, aircraft have been deployed extensively and uh, they have contributed substantially to maintaining maritime security in the Indian Ocean region. A uh, very high uh, operational tempo was, uh, was achieved for the last one year and uh, we have followed the uh, mission-based deployments whereby the ships have been deployed at various uh, strategic locations in the ocean uh, so that they are forward-based and ready to respond to any challenges. So this uh, extensive operational deployment has helped us in, uh, in many ways. Uh, it has helped us to uh, hone our skills, helped us in, uh, in improving and refining our procedures and processes and in a, in a sense to keep the sword sharp. Our personnel trained hard, uh, work very diligently and uh, performed magnificently both uh, uh, on the uh, surface uh, under the sea as well as in the, uh, in the air, over the ocean. Uh, the, uh, the Navy has followed the motto of uh, being a combat ready, credible, cohesive and future proof force uh, which has been uh, focused through the approach called the ship's first approach. Now in this we have focused on our operational assets, be it a ship, submarine or aircraft, uh, so that the people who man them, that is the men and women who man these operational units, are given uh, total support from all the store organizations, from their quarters, etc., so that they can do their job well. Because they are the people who are at the, uh, at the, uh, the field, at the cutting edge of the service, and therefore, they need to be supported and this singular aim has been focused in all our efforts uh, so that when required to go in harm's way, they are fully prepared to, uh, to do so. Uh, while the past year has been operationally busy and uh, very satisfying in many ways, it has also been transformational in a number of uh, aspects. I will just highlight a few aspects while the rest of it will get covered in the uh, subsequent presentation. Uh, the most notable uh, aspect of this transformation, I would say, was the commissioning of Vikram. Uh, you remember this on the 2nd of September, which became uh, the first indigenous aircraft carrier uh, and was commissioned at Kochi by our Honorable Prime Minister. So this has been a landmark event and this signifies the, uh, the persistent efforts of generations of naval leadership, our designers, our planners, the uh, shipyard workers, industry, and a whole lot of other you know supporting uh, agencies and uh, you know, uh, personnel. And uh, I would say that this commissioning of Vikram is a, is a landmark event for the nation as well as the Navy and it's indeed a torch bearer of Atma Nirbhartha. Uh, there are very few countries 
uh, who have the capability to make an aircraft carrier and we now form uh, one of the that elite or select band. It inspires confidence in uh, self-confidence amongst us and uh, I would say it is a shining symbol of uh, our indigenous, indigenous capability. Uh, it has contributed to enhancing the stature of the, of the nation in the world and we have been uh, getting congratulatory messages from many of the uh, countries as well as the navies and I am sure Vikram will proudly fly the Tiranga across the uh, wide reaches of the Indo-Pacific in the years to come. While the commissioning of Vikram that happened, uh, another important event uh, took place uh, on the same day, on the same day, which was the uh, unveiling of the new naval ensign. Uh, this was in line with the, uh, the government policy of doing away or shedding the, uh, the vestiges of uh, colonial uh, symbols and practices. So we were, we have unveiled the new naval ensign. In fact, the new design was uh, by one of our own uh, sailors from a ship, uh, which was uh, worked upon, improved, and then uh, promulgated. So this uh, decision to change the uh, ensign was brought in in a very swift and decisive manner, without any delay, and it reflects the uh, uh, agility and the uh, responsiveness of the Indian Navy as an organization. Uh, while talking of this, uh, of the Tiranga, uh, I also want to uh, bring home this point that on the 15th of August uh, this year, we had uh, seven ships uh, hosting the Tiranga at, uh, at ports in six continents, which is no mean feat. And uh, this aspect actually reflects the reach, uh, flexibility and sustainability of the uh, naval assets uh, over the uh, area, areas of interest. Uh, talking of uh, Atman Narbarda, you know, there has been great focus to, uh, to deploy our capital in a, in a judicious manner so that we develop the capabilities that is uh, that is uh, essential uh, for us. We have fostered R&D in uh, niche technology uh, through the indigenous effort. Now towards this, we conducted the Swavalamban seminar which happened on 18th of uh, July, uh, which was inaugurated by the Honorable Prime Minister. And, and uh, we had requested him to uh, put out 75 challenges. The response, I must say, has been uh, uh, stupendous. Uh, we got more than 1,000 uh, two-motor proposals as well from the uh, industry, from Tata, from uh, new uh, tech, tech companies and so on, out of which nearly 166 of them are getting, uh, getting approved for being taken forward. So very hopeful that this uh, seminar uh, has, will result in the induction of, uh, of some cutting-edge technology in various aspects in the next uh, uh, year or so. So the aim is to have, you know, uh, made in India, made by India and made for India uh, security solutions uh, so that the Navy can uh, strengthen uh, the uh, move towards uh, Adhanar Bharata. As regards the optimization of the budget, uh, we are uh, driving self-reliance and uh, development of uh, indigenous technology. This year, our Navy's share of the budget was 17.8 percent, which we feel is uh, quite uh, adequate. And uh, more importantly, in uh, expanding this budget, we've been able to uh, manage it quite well in the sense that the uh, revenue to capital ratio has been maintained at about 32 uh, percent revenue to 68 percent uh, uh, capital, which is uh, quite good by any standards. So, what how does it help us? It helps us in uh, ensuring that we have adequate funding for our capital projects. 
this gives us a uh, tremendous amount of flexibility in uh, in looking at new cases and you know taking forward a new capability development plans the other transformational aspect that i want to highlight here is the agnipath uh, scheme now the agnipath scheme has uh, as taken shape has been implemented and uh, uh, we are looking at uh, complete transformation of the of the manpower Uh, especially in the uh, ranks women officers for about uh, last uh, i would say uh, 16 17 years but uh, this is the first time that uh, we are inducting women sailors so this is a landmark event for us and uh, similarly uh, to uh, uh, i would say to uh, complement the presence of women officers on board now we have these women sailors and uh, at the same time uh, come come the next year we are looking at women officers uh, being inducted across the all branches not just the uh, the uh, seven or eight branches that we have, uh, they are restricted to as of today but next year or not still will be open for uh, all branches will be open for uh, women officers as well so uh, uh, the navy uh, in short has been constantly trying to make uh, uh, changes uh, challenging the status quo and always uh, querying uh, old practices to see how uh, we can be more agile and change with the requirements of the of the time uh, the honorable president is uh, traditionally hosted for navy day at uh, the navy house here in delhi uh, but uh, this time uh, in consonance with the uh, the government directive we have uh, shifted out the uh, main navy day celebrations to vizag uh the honorable president has kindly consented to be the uh, chief guest so we are having an operational demonstration there and uh, all the other events uh, connected with the reception everything will be held at vizag we hope uh, you know many of you will be able to participate in it at vizag uh, so this is again a reflection of the navy's uh, ability to adapt and our commitment to adopting change so in short a lot has happened in the last uh, one year i only touched briefly touched upon a few of those aspects uh, details will be covered in the uh, the presentation uh, shortly and uh, once the presentation is over i will provide my, my views on a few more of the issues uh, and that will be followed by a question and answer session uh, thank you thank you sir this is the uh, the motto that we inspire our personnel to keep in mind at all times in whatever activity they engage in the recent global events they amply underscore that uh, we cannot remain dependent on others for our own security requirements the events in uh, the uh, russia ukraine war have demonstrated this aspect therefore the government has given us very clear guidelines on atmanirbhar bharat and towards that uh, one of the commitments that the navy has made to the uh, top leadership is that we will become a uh, atmanirbhar navy by 2047 and all our efforts are being focused in this direction uh, the rapid pace of advancements in technology Uh, there is need for us to not only catch up with the developments but also to uh, to go ahead of the curve and towards that we have to adopt uh, a pole vaulting approach and uh, this is being pursued with uh, great passion and uh, we are trying to adopt niche and disruptive technologies uh, you just saw the sprint challenge which is uh, all supporting maybe it's an anagram and when you expand it it is uh, supporting pole vaulting in r&d through uh, idex nio and tdac which are the uh, or the sub uh, organizations that have been created to support the indigenization initiatives and uh, our progress towards atmanirbhar bharat so uh, we hope to seamlessly meld the various aspects of innovation indigenization and sub reliance into uh, into uh, getting the requisite technology 
as well as the capability that the Navy wants to be a future-proof force. In terms of uh, physical resources, uh, we are well aware that uh, you know, it is not possible to get all the resources that you require to all the imaginable challenges that you can face. And uh, uh, being an aspirational nation, we know that the budget has to be balanced against the requirements of uh, development, against the requirements of uh, 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 social commitments, against the requirements of uh, uh, other uh, infrastructure requirements and so on. So our focus in the Navy is to uh, ensure that every rupee uh, that is given to us is uh, utilized to the health to ensure that it translates into capability development and combat readiness. So uh, both aspects that is budget and combat readiness also are increasingly being looked at jointly and uh, that brings me to the uh, aspects of jointmanship. Uh, as a Navy we are convinced that the way forward is to jointness and the uh, Navy is fully committed to jointmanship, jointness and uh, uh, integration and in a positive manner, looking at how to optimize resources. The late General Bipin Rawat had laid the foundation for uh, increased synergy between the three services. And the present CDS, uh, General Anil Chauhan, has also uh, provide, uh, pro uh, provided renewed impetus towards the same. Uh, we are working upon uh, uh, ensuring that we achieve greater joinness, cohesion, and subsequent integration in the way we plan and the way we uh, operate. A uh, lot of uh, work is happening in the, uh, in the aspect of, uh, of developing the theatre command. The discussions are underway. The Navy is also uh, instituted a, a trophy each at the, uh, at the Sailors Training Institute and Stilka for the best uh, women activity. Uh, in the name of uh, late General Rawat and uh, similarly a trophy has been issued in the name of, of uh, General Rawat at uh, the Naval War College uh, as well. So this just want, we just want to highlight that is one of the aspects of, uh, of joinness that we wanted to uh, inculcate the spirit of joinness amongst our uh, uh, men as well as the officers. Uh, as far as the uh, inspiring initiatives are concerned, uh, we have taken to heart the punch run by the uh, Honorable Prime Minister and we are working on it to ensure that we live up to uh, all five of them, uh, particularly the one on Gulami Ki Manchikta Se Mukti. In this uh, regard, we are reviewing all our rules, regulations, you know, processes, SOPs, uh, our traditions, etc., to ensure that we uh, wean away completely from the uh, colonial uh, vestiges and uh, ancient practices which have got no relevance in today's uh, context. Uh, it, there is also increasing recognition of the importance of, and the vast potential which is resident in the oceans around us, uh, particularly the blue economy. Uh, currently, uh, we are harnessing it at about 4% of the GDP and there is definitely room for you know, improving it and harnessing much more from the oceans. Uh, similarly, the, our dependence on the trade and energy lines and the scope for enhanced maritime uh, connectivity as well. Uh, so, there is greater emphasis and acknowledgement of the criticality of maritime security. Uh, if you remember, the Honorable Prime Minister had chaired a meeting on maritime security when India was at the uh, chair of the UN Security Council uh, in uh, uh, recently. And as uh, India grows, the maritime interest and the investments will also expand uh, proportionately. So, uh, this will automatically translate into uh, expansion of the uh, of the tasking of the Navy and our responsibilities as well as the operational footprint will need to increase uh, in a commensurate manner to ensure that we meet the uh, requirements of the nation of, uh, of protecting, uh, preserving and promoting the national interest in the maritime domain.
So our endeavour, uh, therefore, in the region is to be a uh, preferred security partner and also to be the first responder in, in uh, case of any crisis, which is supported by, which is facilitated by our mission-based deployment. And uh, therefore, the Navy will continue to be guided by Saga, uh, the doctrine of Saga, by uh, Honourable uh, Prime Minister, which is uh, security and growth for all in the region. And as uh, uh, as our Honourable EM had said, you know, India uh, does not intend to grow separately. You know, we intend to grow together with all the other countries in the region. And uh, therefore, building bonds of friendship and uh, operational cohesion with like-minded nations across uh, the Indo-Pacific is something we are focused on and uh, in every uh, operational endeavour and interaction that we undertake, we, we are very clear that we need to interact and uh, build trust and uh, cooperation as well as uh, coordination with uh, the like-minded uh, countries in the region. Uh, so these are some of the lines of effort that the Navy is committed to follow so that uh, we will remain a combat ready, uh, credible, cohesive and future proof force. Uh, so now before I take on any questions, I must uh, uh, compliment the media for efforts in kindling maritime awareness across the length and breadth of our country and for keeping our fellow uh, countrymen informed uh, well about the developments in the maritime uh, domain as well as the uh, as well as uh, educating them about the Indian Navy and what we do at uh, sea. And uh, lastly, I wish to convey uh, the Navy's eternal gratitude to our veterans, some of them who are present here as well, uh, who sailed uh, these waters much, much before us. Uh, they stood firm at the helm of the Navy and whose efforts are seen today in an eminently capable, powerful, uh, uh, reliable and uh, uh, maritime force which serves the nation with pride and strength. So, uh, thank you for your time, Jayan. Uh, I am uh, now willing to take on uh, questions.